Welcome back to Shore Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Avenue, Dave Crossan with you. As we continue our music-themed show, we gave you some Jersey artists before. We got another Jersey artist here right now. Remember Jones from Jersey City to Brick. Left the state for a while, but then he realized how good Jersey is. So he came (laughs) back to Jersey in the Asbury Park area. And he's here to talk with us this morning. So... Welcome on in. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. I know it's a little early. <laughs> hey, I try to keep you know? it in the PM, so okay. you know, this is a special event right now. Well, we feel honored that you made it in. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, course, he, he heard you know all the the hype about short time. He's of like, course, I, I heard short time is like church, so I thought you Sunday morning, yeah, let's absolutely. go, let's we'll, genuflect, yeah, get everybody uh, you know pumped up on a Sunday morning. Yeah, that's steak what I like. and eggs, you know. Because Dave and I have talked breakfast for dinner sometimes, but oh. I said, yeah, what about dinner for breakfast? A little steak and eggs? Yeah, I mean, nothing wrong with that. That's right. a great thing. I love <laughs> breakfast for dinner. Love you know what? It's <laughs> good, isn't it? Like pancakes. What's wrong with that? Well, I'm like a keto guy. Ah, okay. You know? so okay. like, gotcha. And breakfast, a lot of low-carb stuff there. <laughs> eggs okay. and cheese you could get yeah. away with. So like a frittata mm. for dinner, veggies and meats. There it is. You that know? makes sense. There I got to pass on the pancakes unfortunately uh, but tell me I how they taste pass on the pancakes. <laughs> if you tell me how they taste and i could smell them that's usually enough for hey, me you know some i feel like yankee candle or somebody should make a candle of like breakfast foods oh i think it's a great idea i actually went into yankee candle looking for a strawberry cheesecake one because i love cheesecake okay, okay. And, and i would hope to have found a food section maybe like a french toast candle oh, a or french french something like that. section there you go maybe you could go give me the whole gamut yeah, without a doubt and all of a sudden, your house starts smelling like different foods. I'm like, oh, wow. What, what are What's you making? What's going on in here? Nothing. Yeah. Well, when you walk into Yankee Candy, you get a headache sometimes. Oh, so yeah, if, yeah. It, if it smells so like much, yeah. dinner or, yeah. you know, a Burger King, I would sign me up. I used to work at the Jackson Outlets at Under Armour. Every time I would, like, walk past, even, not even just walk into Yankee Candle, like, walk in there, like, you get, like, a whole whiff of, like, the t- 30 different scents in there. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure <laughs> if it's much. actually helping them. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, people buy candles. I mean, it yeah. smells good, but it's just kind of, like, all at once. It's a little overwhelming. Yes, for sure. <laughs> well, it smells great in here. Yeah. If anybody's you know, wondering. It's like, a, it's like an air, Febreze air freshener. It's like a... <laughs> Clean linen, I think. Then you it keep was, a good studio. I love it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, like to keep good vibes. In yeah. <laughs> it's a must. <laughs> but I digress. Um, <laughs> so we, we've covered food. We've covered candles. Let's talk <laughs> and some that's music. It. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah, I really that's appreciate it. That was your take. <laughs> <laughs> we you know, got your, we got your favorite candle scent. That's that's what we were looking yeah, for. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You know, this is super cool for me. Um, you know, I grew up. Uh, we lived in Ocean Township for a little while, and mm. then and then moved to Brick. And, okay. uh, you know, I graduated high school like 20 something years ago, Brick Memorial High School. Nice. And nice. Um, so when I was living in Ocean Township, 94.3 The Point was in Seaview Square Mall, yeah. which is not even okay. there anymore. Right. It's, okay. it's different stores <laughs> sure. and, and everything. And I was just obsessed as a kid. And I, actually, this is a good segue to talk about a lot of things I'm doing. But I remember uh, Bad Out of Hell 2 coming out. Mm. Right, oh, yeah. meatloaf, anything for love, but I won't do that. I was so obsessed, and I would call the radio station every day to request the song, <laughs> and I and they got used to hearing my voice, you know, okay. who I was, and they <laughs> were very friendly and invited me into the studio okay. to take a little tour. I can't remember who was you know uh, doing any shows. I have okay. no idea the names, but I do remember at the mall there was like a facade. Hmm. That was looked like a radio or a stereo, and you could walk by it and watch them live oh, on that's air. Cool. Oh, um, I mean, that mall's long gone. Now, it was <laughs> that's, actually that's really cool that you could do that. Yeah, yeah, it was actually long gone, right. even at the time. <laughs> to be honest with you, but um, it was such a cool thing for me. And I was just a uh, as a music lover and a music right. kid, you know, just obsessed with radio, listening to radio all the time, making mixtapes at that age. Oh yeah, you know, yep, did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So I would catch, you know, I think I probably somewhere have them saying, you know, it's a request by Anthony or whatever. And then I would call and say, thank you so much. Can we do, you know, I was just a mess. But, you know, as, as a, you know, 10 year old kid or whatever, I mean, that was so kind. It's a big deal. Yeah, that was so kind of them. You know, it was such a big deal to me. Uh, you know, wow, uh, the world, 94 through the points. I go, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, like once you and walk you're in, you're hearing it's like them so and cool. then now you're seeing them. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. It was just a really, really cool thing. Got a tour of the studio and everybody was super friendly. And, and uh, so so I have a, a thing with 94 through the point. There you go. Well, you let's t- let's talk about your music. Let's yes. go back in time and let's yes. talk about your influences, your music, and bringing it to now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, well, you know, I, I uh, call Asbury Park home. Um, which is such like a music uh, hub for New Jersey. And, and I tour all around the country now. And there's really no other place like it. When I tell people like what we have here and, and the um, 
capabilities to perform or the outlets to to reach people and entertain. It just doesn't really happen anywhere else. And that was probably a part of my upbringing too. You know, knowing the the music history of New Jersey and and uh, my family just being music lovers. Okay. No, no one was really a musician. But, but they love music. Love music. Okay. We we're always around music. There you, uh, go. you know, everybody playing songs, singing harmonies or whatever. Um, and you know, when CDs came out, Columbia House. <laughs> you know, we were on top of that. There you go. Um, so we, they were collectors too of music and records and things like that. So I just was really influenced by that and found my first outlet to perform in musical theater. Okay. Um, which is no surprise to people who see my shows. Uh, because they're super theatrical and, and energetic. I take, yeah, oh right. yeah, I take a lot of that influence. But uh, you know, doing plays in school and then ultimately community theater and then professional theater, uh, that was really my outlet. And I was you know like funny guy and could sing, so it, it all kind of added up. And then um, I started to have bands sort of later into my teens while I was doing musicals because I had more of like a pop rock voice right. mm. i would do shows like jesus christ superstar and godspell and and you know kind of pippin kind of rock uh, opera type tommy that okay. kind of thing so uh i felt really comfortable in those and then had bands and sort of found my way out of theater a little bit and more focused on on being a front man mm. and um uh really at some point into that career probably 10 years after that time period i decided to hybrid the two and uh, give myself a stage name, which is Remember Jones. Great name. And um, I, I wanted something people would remember. You know? <laughs> Very and, true. And uh, I talked. Well, how'd you I, come? Well, how'd you come up with it? Well, you know? there, there's actually a, a, a singer songwriter um, like myself from New Jersey with the same name. My my real yes. name is Anthony Damato, but the uh, his name is the same. He's kind of a uh, Americana folk singer. Very different from me. And when MySpace was the thing, and MySpace music, <laughs> uh, I know we, we laugh now, but man, it was such a thing then. Oh, it but was. They, uh, they uh, kind of conjoined our profiles together, both Anthony D'Amato's, I guess, thinking, oh, like, thinking it was MySpace. some sort of mistake. Okay. And it just became this headache, and, and people were booking him, looking for me, and vice versa, <laughs> and, and that was very different. So I just, I knew I could create this persona okay that that he couldn't because he his music he's amazing just different mm, you know sure. and and i think he um aligned with his own name more than i did on stage i was i was a character on stage ah, anyway okay. so uh remember jones kind of brands myself allows me to kind of be whatever i want to be whenever i want to be uh, it's kind of my lady gaga or my freddie mercury or tina turner if you think of it that way even david bowie not even his real name you know so but, right it's yeah, just a good point uh, it took a while for me to commit to that, and, and a mentor of mine said, "If people don't like it, change it to something else." There you go. <laughs> you know, and uh, it worked. It really worked for me, and and I've been, uh, you know, just taken off since. And, and and Asbury Park in Monmouth County, in particular, um, have been really influential in my career and have allowed me to grow beyond just New Jersey. But six months a year on the road. Oh so. well. Um, but I call Asbury Park home now, and. Uh, only play there a few times a year, but uh, it's just, it's been really great. It's, it's been great to grow. Obviously, the, the few years of the pandemic right. or a step back that we're kind of still coming out of. What was that of like, being mm. a musician, going through the pandemic, trying to still put music out or? You know, I, I tried to sugarcoat it for, sometimes <laughs> I talk about it, but painful, definitely painful. Um, you know, I'm an entertainer first. Like, I, I think I'm a writer third. I'm a singer second. You if, you, if you push me out on a stage and and put me in front of people, right. I could do my thing. And you guys, you guys <laughs> are, have that capability as well, you know. So right. um, that's my strength: putting on a show, entertaining people, taking taking nothing and turning it into something. So to not be able to do that, you know, that was mm. painful. Sure. I mean, I could sing in my in my shower. I could uh, write songs all day long, but that you know thing, the the connection to people, not having that was was hard and so we did live streaming for a little while but i mean that was not fun for yeah, me. different without a crowd yeah and i i sing to the sky you know i have this yeah. huge powerful voice so like to sing it to this tiny dot <laughs> feed all the <laughs> audiences in there yeah yeah, that's you right. see me? <laughs> yeah yeah right that that energy i learned a lot though you know we had to learn that and I, I say like artists didn't really get a break like some people did mm. we had to you know deal with the emotions of losing everything that we were doing i mean i lost my entire business structure oh boy at, you know at the time sure. I, and, um and and you know just to, to adjust to this other world took time and learning and patience and money that we weren't making. Mm. So people were really giving 
you know, fan base and, right. and doing live streams and things like that. Like people were really, really helpful and and that was cool. And even if people had no money and they just said, Hey, we're thinking about you, what's going on? Are you okay? That's priceless. So yeah. um I I did write a record though in that time. You with, have that video that everybody watches. Oh yeah, yeah. Can you talk about that? I, I have a I have a lot of them. Okay. <laughs> well the one in particular, the cartoon about Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um yeah, yeah, Fat Jeans was actually yes. that was my first single during that time. Um and it had a lot to do with my pandemic story. I think all of us uh, put on the COVID. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> the COVID 45. Eh, um, might as well eat. We're yeah, home. Right? Right, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I actually have uh, a, a weight loss history. I, it's hard to put that to words. But at one point and during my high school years, and a lot of people knew me in this area as, you know, a big guy. I was 400 pounds. Wow. So oh, wow. I, um, you know, took time about 10 years ago and, and through diet and exercise lost for you. 200 pounds plus pounds. Yeah, and, that's awesome. Um, it was pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. It, I wasn't sure how I was going to do that for the rest of my life, you know, after I lost the initial right. weight. Right. Um, trying to keep it up. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely hard for a few years, but it's it's been good. I've, I've been able to do it, but the COVID time was a test. Right. You know, that for, for everybody. everybody. Yeah. You know, like that was, <laughs> that was tough. Uh, even when I thought I was eating well, I was just doing right. nothing, you know? Well, think about people went to gyms. The gyms weren't open. It was such a challenging time to figure out some sort of routine to get exactly. through it. And of course, not overeating yeah. um, during the, that time period. It's hard because you're like sitting home watching movies or TV. Right. You're like, a eh, bag of chips here right. or whatever yeah, there. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it happened, and I I decided to kind of write a song about it, which I right. I had never sung about my um, my weight loss or it's very or, or entertaining. My it's a great song. Yeah, it's fun. So I called it Fat Jeans because you know in my <laughs> in my drawers at home, you know there is a dresser of stuff when I feel real good and, and svelte, <laughs> and then there are you know my fat jeans if I have if I have a cheat day or something like sure. that or a cheat week. <laughs> um, I put my fat jeans on and I just said that in the conversation, you know, I just, I put my fat jeans on and it sounded musical to me, wrote this song and, uh, had a great video animated by a friend of mine and, uh, he, he worked so hard on it. We worked well together just conceptually and laughed so hard at every minute of it. And, um, it's, it's all true. I mean, it's all a real story. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's fun. And, and people resonated with that at the time. Um, uh, and still do. I perform it in the live shows and it's a great fun moment. And, uh, I, I love the humor aspect of it, but there's also a, a little, you know, right. true storytelling in that sure. and connecting people together. Um, I think people see me now and they don't realize that I have that struggle. So as as a, a writer does mm. often, you take from your life and you you do your thing. So sure. it's it's really cool. The video is a blast. If you want to check it out and you haven't and you're listening, uh, Fat Jeans. <laughs> um, there is some controversy over that song because it was borrowed, quote unquote, by a uh, uh, national artist a little larger than me. Um, wow. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I had heard that. Yeah, it, yeah, stolen, some would say. Dun, dun, uh, dun. The songs don't sound exactly the same, but the concepts are identical and the videos are okay. almost identical. Mm. Um, another animated video. So I don't even need to mention it because we don't want to give that any airtime, but you can you can find <laughs> you can find it out yourself. I mean, you search Fat Jeans, remember Jones, and it comes up. It definitely hit some national uh, oh, there you go. news outlets and stuff. And uh got me some plays and some views. <laughs> Out of all the places you've been to in traveling, um, touring all over the country, and of course New Jersey, there do you prefer like the smaller venues or the large venues to you know get up on stage and perform? I was just having this conversation the other day because there you, uh, you know we as we tour, there are some cities and locations where we are playing big festivals or big theaters, and then there's somewhere I still don't have that ground just yet. So mm. we play a smaller venue, and there's. You know, we we will go from fifty people one night to five hundred or five thousand. Oh well. So as a front man and and kind of a, a visionary type, I have to adapt. You know, and be able to control that type of audience every time. And my band is down for the ride, and, and they know <laughs> the set list might change depending okay. on you know how things go. And and we have plans for that. But I I hate it's so weird to say I like them all, but well, right. Um, you know, I get that. Yeah, yeah. This past weekend, I I did um a few intimate sort of cabaret type settings mm. for uh, fans. And they, okay. were, they were kind of invite only and private. And there was about 30 people there. And I was able to tell stories and, and sing stripped down versions of my songs that I, I don't typically anywhere else. And it was really special. Oh, wow. And and a lot of them had never heard me sing. But I usually have you know, like a 10 piece band. Right, with big me. band. And sometimes, <laughs> you know, in, in Jersey, sometimes I'll do up to 20 or 25 people, a choir, a horn section, string section, all this stuff. 
Um, on the road, we take around 10 people. So these people had never heard me sing with just a piano or something, you know? Oh, so that's wow. cool. So that was really special, and I really like doing that. It, it definitely turns up the storytelling and, and the, uh, the connection to the material. But, like, I love a party, you know, and I love <laughs> the opportunity to be in, like, a huge theater. Sure. Uh, my home base theater is the Count Basie. Okay. Um, in Red Bank. Uh, Red Bank, sure. So, Classic, legendary. Yeah, I've sold it out many times. Grew up on that stage doing you know musicals and plays. And, good place to see a show. Yeah, it's it's so good. So, you know, the 1,600 people there, when they stand up, you, you almost feel like pushed <laughs> back, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool <laughs> feeling there, and, and it's special for everybody involved. So I, I like it all a little bit. Um, That's fair, yeah. I like to perform and stuff, you know. There you go. So, yeah. <laughs> We got to dive to a quick break, but want to talk more about your upcoming shows and performing as well. Can you hang around? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, there we go. He's gonna hang with us. Dude. We got pancakes let's here, so let's yes. go. <laughs> Why not? And French toast smelling candles. <laughs> <laughs> We've got it all covered here on Short Time with Vin and Dave. It continues right after this on ninety four three The Point. Hi, this is Christy Pierce Rampone, former U.S. women's soccer team captain, Olympic gold medalist. World Cup champion and Point Borough High School alum, and you're listening to Shore Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point. Tune in for some real conversation with Dave and Vin. You don't want to miss this. Let's face it, investment concepts and financial planning can be very intimidating and confusing. Shoreline Wealth Management addresses that feeling head on. Their goal is to educate you while offering financial advice without buzzwords and jargon. Shoreline includes you in the process and makes you comfortable every step of the way on your path to financial freedom. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information today. Shoreline Wealth Management with offices in Manchester and Manahawkin. Securities offered through LPL Financial member Fin. SIPC. Hey, this is UFC championship fighter and Tom's River High School East alumni Frankie Edgar, and you're listening to Short Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point. Dave and Vin, these guys are the buzz. Welcome back to Short Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Ebenu, Dave Cross, and with you with us here this morning is a local artist, Remember Jones, who's talking about some of his influence and we a little bit about food and candles as well. Mm. Uh, but he's got some shows coming up this year. Uh, including April 14th and 15th at Oxrod Performing Arts Center in Deal, and that's close to sold out, so you better hop on that. Uh, June 2nd at the Count Basie in, in Red Bank, June 10th at Resorts Casino Superstar Theater in AC, and also a uh, big-time music festival coming up this summer, North to Shore, just announced by Governor Murphy and his administration during the week in Newark, Asbury Park in Atlantic City, and you're taking the stage down in AC. Yeah, that's right. Uh, just very cool to be involved with this uh, North to Shore Festival. And um, uh, I'll be doing uh, the Resorts Casino, the, the Superstar Theater, on June 10th. We'll be doing all of Meatloaf's Bat Out of Hell album. Oh, wow. There you go. I've got a 15-piece band. With part one or part two? Uh, so we're doing all of part one. Okay. And then we got... Some stuff from part two. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, it's funny to think about that album being only like seven songs, but like forty-five minutes or, right. or you yeah, know, right. fifteen minutes. They're pretty long. So to get like an entire night going, well, get grab three or four from the second album because they were just as long, and we're all good. Um, I, I'm actually like a, a huge fan of uh, of of Jim Steinman, who wrote right. all, of, mm. all of the music. And um, it really helps, like, my theatricality and sort of tongue-in-cheek thing at the same time happen. And um, I just have always connected with that material. I mean, he wrote Total Eclipse of the Heart. He wrote It's oh, All wow. Coming Back Didn't to Me that. Now by Celine Dion. He wrote oh, wow. Holding Out for a Hero, uh, Making Love Out of Nothing at All, Air Supply. I mean, it was just a Read Him and Weep, Barry Manilow. It's like all these wow. huge hits that were Jim Steinman, surrounded by the Bat Out of Hell 1 and 2 success. Um and he's got a few musicals and things like that, too. So I'm doing that June 10th uh, as part of the North Shore Festival in AC. But I'm doing the show first, June 2nd, at the Count Basie Theater in Red Bank. And this is actually a revival of me doing this show. We did it last year. Um, it was huge. We did three nights and sold out immediately. I and mean, we sold out within a couple of days. And I had Max Weinberg on drums, mm, which was super that's really cool. Nice. Max played the album in 1977, Bad Out of Hell, in the studio. So that's him on pretty much all the tracks. And this was his first time performing it live. So that was super wow, cool, really kind, cool. Of, kind of a cool honor. There you go. He obviously is not available for June. They are on the road with the E Street Band. <laughs> That's right. But uh, I do have you know some other guests and things lined up for that run nice. in June. And uh, yeah, it's just so much fun, man. That show, I, I definitely do my own kind of concept to it. It's 
if you expect theatricality like you do when you listen to Bad Out of Hell, I'm going to give that to you on steroids for sure. There you go. Like uh, that. Crazy outfits, crazy band. Everybody's wild. That's like wireless. one of my favorite music videos. Uh, like, it, um, I would do anything for love, but not uh, that. Oh, yeah. Like, where he dresses up like a gargoyle and all of a sudden sliding across the floor. I'm like, what's going on here? It was yeah, entertaining sure. and funny at the same time, but also very good. <laughs> it was so it was huge. And I, I can't remember the director, but a really big director on that. Yeah. You know? and, and that was like a comeback for Meatloaf. And, well, think yeah. about the separation of the time between the first yeah, well, album and the two. second, and the pressure on the second album, and they nailed it. Nailed it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 fun history, you know, to go back and dive into all that stuff. A lot of those songs on the second album, Jim Steinman had planned for Bad Out of Hell Two, which was to be released a few years after the first right. one, and there's all he wound up releasing the record himself as Jim Steinman. The record's called Bad for Good, and it's uh, it's just interesting, you know, really the trajectory of the whole Meatloaf thing. I mean, never would have thought that would be as big or close to. I mean, Bad Out of Hell is the top th- third selling album of all and time. And to be able to do that and so many years yeah. of separation yeah, to be able to bring that back again. And it's an amazing they, story. They nailed it. Definitely. So I, I love bringing it back to life and giving kind of people a fresh ear on it, which is super fun. And it's definitely music that I have always sung. It's in my wheelhouse. You know, people are like, wow, can you do that? The pressure's heavy, but right. I definitely love it. And it's, and it's definitely appropriate for me. So that I'm excited about in June. I do have some local stuff in April too. Okay. I do a lot of work with the Axelrod Performing Arts Center in Deal. Um, they're just like five minutes outside of Asbury Park mm. and they are sort of a union theater company. They do a lot of professional theater all year long and I've, I've done a few roles there. I've, I played Jekyll and Hyde in the musical Jekyll and Hyde. Nice. Uh, che in the musical Evita. I just played Teen Angel in Greece. And sang okay. Be- sang a very Remember Jones Beauty School dropout which was a lot of fun. <laughs> sure. But every year I kind of do some kind of theatrical concert or some okay. project there and uh this year i'm doing a 50th anniversary of joe cocker's mad dogs and englishmen oh joe wow cocker nice yeah so this tour was uh from 1970 around that time they released a record which at one time was the top selling live album of all time and it was one of the top selling live tours of all time at the time and uh it had leon russell on piano music directing a 20-piece band surrounded by joe cocker uh, surrounding Joe Cocker, and they're all covers. So it's it's Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Ray Charles, Otis Redding, the band, Leonard Cohen. The list just starts there, with a twenty piece gospel soul wow. arrangement. So it it feels like church, you sure. know, to hear his version with a little help from my friends, which is pretty popular. But with a twenty piece band, a, a you know, a nine person choir, uh, the horn section, two drummers. Um, so we're doing that. We're doing that the 14th and 15th, April 14th and 15th at the Axelrod Performing Arts Center. And tickets are kind of almost sold out. They're selling fast. How can somebody get a ticket? Uh, AxelrodArtsCenter.com okay. or RememberJones.com. You could get all the links there. Uh, we're also taking that show on the road. Uh, Gramercy Theater in New York City, uh, City Winery in Philadelphia. But most excited mm. about Bethel Woods Center for the Arts in Bethel, New York. That's the original Woodstock grounds. Ah, so uh, really pumped about that. We'll be indoors. They have a super cool museum and event space inside, but that's going to be super cool. So kind of a busy couple what things. going on there? Up. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> doing a, I'm doing a little festival down in uh, uh, South Jersey called Camp Jam. They're really supportive of me all year long all over the state. That's in May uh, with my original music. And uh, I'll be touring original music all summer long as well, all around the country. You and I were talking off the air about different artists and influences that you have, and you and I have one in particular, Prince. Yeah, oh, man. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. The artist, yeah. period. You know, like there is, there's no no comparison to Prince. You you could say he was sounded like X Y Z or looked like this, but Prince broke ground every time he stepped on stage, every time he released something, every lyric, every every musical nuance. I mean, Prince to me is the the number one. Mm. You know, uh, when Prince passed, uh, my phone. Day. Oh, my phone blew up Same from everybody. Yeah. I had to pull over my car. I mean, I get a chill just thinking about oh, it because wow. that was it was, I was tragic. In California. I know exactly where I was. I, it was. Have horrible. you taken the Paisley Park tour? I have not. It's amazing. No. Okay, for a fan, it's it's really really cool. Now he had his his home was his studio, right. mm. and in uh, outside Minneapolis, and um, you could take a tour of it now. I have, and I will though. He would <laughs> he would do uh, shows in there, right? Yeah, basically, I think they built it to facilitate studio space for Purple Rain and the Sign of the Times 
tour. I think you're right. I remember a lot of what they did for Sign of the Times. One of my favorite albums of oh, Prince. Yeah. Tremendous. Oh, for sure. And then when Amazing. it came out, it was like, you know, wow, you know, you, Prince, you know, with Purple Rain. And like, where do you go from there? And then a couple al- albums later, here's Sign of the Times. Like, wow, this guy's something else. His story's incredible, too. I always have to like talk to people about why he changed his name to the symbol because people think it's crazy, but it's actually brilliant. Right. And and he stood up against, you know, the, the music business model, which was... An ownership of the music. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's really anti-artist. And, and as a young artist now, as things have shifted, also Prince being the first to take advantage of the internet right. for his music, mm. um, was way ahead of everyone with that. Um, you know, it is it is challenging for a young artist today to release music and be heard and seen and, and streaming. We all know the, the fighting behind the scenes when it comes to that and the royalties and, and how much money you get paid out. So, you know, it, Prince was at the precipice of that, set the example for that. And, and I mean, to make... To, to to not be able to get your masters, so then perform under just a a, a symbol, symbol, yeah, you know, and uh, release a three CD record, Emancipation, uh, Emancipation yeah. under that. I mean, thirty songs, right. you know, just like here you go, I got and I got plenty. And he was he was known to say, if I wanted to hear a new song, I just write. Well, it. and that was the other thing too with the record label. He wanted to release albums when he wanted to, and yep. they felt that was going to saturate the market, and they wanted to control how he released the albums. That was a big issue, and and. That leads us to The Vault, which is like, if you're a Prince fan, you know there's all of this incredible music that they're slowly kind of releasing, but we mentioned off the air too, being members of the fan club at the time, you kind of had access to some of that, and it was just a really, really, uh, uh, just a great community to be a part of. There's thousands of songs that they'll they'll gradually release that he had in The Vault that he didn't release, and now, unfortunately, Mm. since he passed, it's it's been coming out from the estate. Yeah, it was cool to see a lot of that stuff as part of the tour, too. And mm-hmm. you know, not only his outfits, which is another thing, too, is a big influence of mine, you know, always wearing something unique and getting something custom made. And I work with designers, too, for my shows. And I know everybody who knows me listening knows, what is he going to wear? It's right. kind of <laughs> like a thing. Once somebody said that to me, I'm like, oh, man, I got to commit now. But, you know, guys with their gear, the, this is my gear, you know, and, right. and, and it's it all helps the show itself and it influences what I do and how people look around me. And so all my shows are fully designed in that way, too. And Prince did a lot of that as well. I, I mean, I've played uh, uh, First Avenue. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Cool. You know, if I would have known, I would have worn my shirt okay. today. But, uh, you know, it's such a, like a legendary venue. Yes, it is. And, uh, legendary artists well that's where they their... filmed Purple Rain yep, yep yep exactly and and Prince you know was supported by the Minneapolis community that's really how he was able to make it this national thing I mean a brilliant you really mind. put Minneapolis on the map yep oh yeah and, and he could play every instrument produce his records mm-hmm. the first few albums he played every instrument and produced it himself and wrote the songs and arranged them I mean it's it's really a, a brilliant brilliant uh, artist that uh, will be sorely missed I mean yes. it is sorely missed for sure but I love, I, you know, these people always want me to do a Prince show because I do these, I do these kind of, you know, <laughs> right. shows. And I, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Because you hear the influence in my original music a lot. Um, but it's one of those artists where I'm like, I don't know if I need to touch it. Okay. Mm. You know, it's so There's so good. much music and there's so many different albums that you can take pieces of. It would be a challenge, actually, to put together a show. Sure, because sure. Because there's so many songs that weren't necessarily popular songs, which, which I like. is great songs. Yeah, yeah, and I tend to, you know, like them more. And and anybody, young people that come to me and want to talk influences, I say, listen to Prince. Right. You, it'll take you a year, but, like, listen to, <laughs> listen, take some time, yeah, listen to the catalog because you will leave being a fan. I mean, there's right. there's just, it, yeah, so everybody has artists, uh, songs by artists you don't really like or right. you, don't, you don't, it right. doesn't soak in for you. But every record, you're going to find something, you know, for every artist in any genre. You know, he was able to really do it all. One of the most underrated guitar players of all time. And it's a shame hmm. that it took his passing for people to realize what did we have? We had somebody amazing. And yeah. That unfortunately happens where you look back, it's like, I didn't realize how good a guitarist he was and all yeah. this great music that he had. That happens with me with, you know, the Meatloaf and, and Jim Steinman stuff. They just passed as well and people don't realize certain things were them or, or, or what that happened, how that happened. I have a show that I've done in about 40 states that's um, dedicated to Amy Winehouse. Oh, wow. And... Um, She's, you know, one of the best vo- vocalists of all time. Died when she was very young, too. And, and what that career could have been, right. you know, we don't know. But the the people that come to celebrate the music as we do, I, I don't call it a tribute. It's more of a celebration because I'm not looking like her with a beehive or heels, <laughs> though I could if given the challenge. Um, 
you know, people are so into their weeping, you know, because they didn't get a chance to hear right. it live or see it live. And maybe they connect with her later or only knew mm. the song Rehab and, and, mm. and the, Good the, point. her struggle surrounding it. So they come and they just feel it. It's all it's all about that feeling. Right. Of, wow, I can feel this energy in this room and you did the service, you know, to this music that, that we need to hear. We'll see it again because... You know, you're the one doing it right. So it's that's been a real honor and a really cool thing. And I and I don't know. It, I haven't seen a, a, anybody living as Prince really delivering that thing. And that's to me why he's he just can't really. I wouldn't want a, a Prince performance or somebody covering Prince to just do hits. And that's yeah. what I would be afraid of. Yeah, there's for so sure. much there that. Yeah, I want the deep cuts. Yeah, exactly. Definitely want the deep cuts. And and I will say, you know, being from Jersey and, and Asbury Park specifically in this area, you know, has. Uh, allowed me to do these kinds of things and people to be open-minded to the creativity and trust me with it. We have a great scene of original music. We have a great scene of cover artists here. Um, you know, I kind of liken myself to uh, song stylists, you know, kind of like Tina Turner or or Joe Cocker or hmm. Tom Jones or uh, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. You know, these people who, who didn't really write their music first and foremost. They, I'm sure they contributed to writing, but... Uh, they were given songs and put their spin to it and created something new. That's that's to my strength as an entertainer, I think. And uh, I, I feel very fortunate to have had in New Jersey, but all over the country, um, people who who like that and trust me with that. It's it's been it's been really cool. I mean, I love being here. I love Asbury Park. Love sure. Jersey. Love that I can go to venues and go to theaters and and support on all levels. But I, I really do like the opportunity with connecting with people just all over the country. There you go. Last question I have. Uh, what do you like about performing in New Jersey and some foods you like about Jersey? What What is it that makes the Jersey Shore, New Jersey, you know, special to you? It really is like nowhere else. I, I've I've opened <laughs> I've opened for uh, Darlene Love. I've opened for oh, wow. Ronnie Spector. I've sung with Bruce Springsteen. I've opened for the Jukes right in Asbury Park. I mean, some oh, some, some of it just like walking distance, <laughs> you know, from where I live, and uh, that's special. You know, there is a yeah. there is a feeling in a place like the Stone Pony or, or the Count Basie Theater or. Um, you know, uh, even I've done some LBI or, you know, like mm. oh, there, there's really just unique happenings there where people come yeah. expecting music and the feeling that it brings that I really like. You did say food, right? <laughs> yeah, you you said you did food. I mean, look, I mean, we also, uh, wait, I guess, let me interrupt you there. Pork roll or Taylor ham? What do you call it? Pork roll. There we go. Okay. That's a winner right there. Yeah. I <laughs> We're going to let him come back. Just yeah, 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 I mean, for yeah. sure. I mean, for <laughs> definitely pork roll. I'm, I'm a, I love diners. Oh, I man. I love diners. Jersey's got some good diners. Yeah. The, you can't get them anywhere else like they are in Jersey. Yeah. You know, you, you really can't. You know, they're they're like Waffle House on the road or something like that. But <laughs> um, it, I love diner food. Oh, mm. my goodness. Um, even, even if I'm trying to eat healthy, you can still do it right at a you diner. You got to have that cheat day. Oh, definitely. And usually if I <laughs> want a two. cheat day, I want to go to a diner. I want that, like, just give me that greasy splurge man, stuff. Give me a plate of fries with cheese and gravy. <laughs> I'm going all in. Yes. Oh, all You're going to do, do it right. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and, of course, you know, like the best pizza probably in the country in, in New Jersey, too. Good point. Um, and I lived in Chicago for years. So ah. There's no comparison. Chicago's what? The deep dish, right? Yep. The thick. Yeah. 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 No, I would only go if my friends were visiting, <laughs> you know, and, and we'd say, yeah, I'll okay, try the Chicago pizza. Because right. it's, it's really like a, it's a pie. It's like dense, you know. Yeah. It's, it's not the same as the casual folded to the face slice. You know, that, well, <laughs> that, that, thin crust over a Pete and Elvis. That's good stuff. Well, that's, a, yeah. I mean, I have shirts. You know, oh, yeah, from same. eating that whole yep. pie for many, <laughs> many years. Yep. And, but that's a great thing, too, right? How cool is that? That isn't a thing that happens all over the country or in other places, too. Really, New Jersey just has its own kind right. of thing. And right. even living away from, from the state, I missed it. I missed the accessibility to the cities and the beach and the mountains. I mean, New Jersey is just like... We have it all? Yeah, it's really, really, really cool. <laughs> Well, th well, we appreciate you coming on today and talking. Well, I mean, talking about food. Dave and I like talking about food. <laughs> I could do uh, another show on that. Yes, yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. Uh, uh, but also about music, your influence, your music journey, performing um, influences. And then, of course, you got a bunch of shows coming up this year where people can go out and see it. But uh, we appreciate you taking out time to come on the show. Thank you for thinking of me and having me. And follow along. Instagram, RememberJones, RememberJones.com. There and, it is. Uh, I'll see you and listen to you guys soon. Okay. Appreciate Sounds it. Yeah. Thanks Thank again. You. All right. That is Remember Jones. More short time with Vin and Dave right after this on 94.3 The Point. Hey.
said, this is Frankie Pantangeli. You should be listening to Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point. Yes! Oh! Whether you are in the early stages of investing, getting ready to retire, or planning your estate, you need a financial planner who will guide you on a clear path with honesty and transparency. Shoreline Wealth Management provides clarity through the complexity. Shoreline's system is straightforward. They will understand your financial circumstances, identify goals, analyze current plans, and customize a path to position you to reach your goals. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information today. ShorelineWealth.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA. SIPC. Hey, this is Tony Gaga. You need a radio guy. You gotta go to the radio guys that I go to. Ben and Dave on 94.3 The Point. Abu Gaga, Abu Gaga, Abu Gaga. 